Hip Hop Echte hip hop in je smooth. Echte hip hop in je smooth. Come on. Yeah. What's up? This is promo from the Loop Troop Rockers. You're checking out hip hop in your smooth.com. Hip hop in your face. Hip hop in your arms. But a lot of times when, when we do hometown shows, it's a little too much stress, you know, because this. Uh, Like when you're in a city somewhere far away, like you can't do anything. You're just sitting there, you're waiting for the show. You don't know anybody, and then you just go on and do the show. But in your hometown, it's like all these different things you have to to fix. You, you meet people all the time, you talk to, and uh, you have to do the dishes at home or and maybe wash your clothes or something, and do the gig at the same day. So. Uh, usually I don't like it, but but this last time was uh, really great. I recognize some of that, you know, in the, in Sweden as well. But we still have a pretty big scene with uh, a lot of kids who really appreciate the the Swedish hip hop, and uh, there are, there are some legends, you know, and some. I mean. Loop Trooper, we have some kind of legend status because we've always been independent and we've been doing it our own way. So we, we're not we're not famous, you know, to everybody. These last days uh, when I've been walking around in Malmö, everybody's been like, ah, you were great this Saturday. And, you know, everybody recognized me because of beard. But, really? Yeah. <laughs> There are other artists like uh, Timbuktu, for example. He, he's uh, huge uh, all over, you know, not just uh, between the hip hoppers or something. He's got a special position because at the same time, when when I got started in rap, I used to listen to his stuff as well okay. in English. Right. He was rapping in English, and now he's huge and mainstream in Swedish. But still, you know, he's got a message. So, can also, like you said, there's a different sound between the loop troop and between the promo sound. Yeah. Like, uh, I've had more reggae influence in my sound. I've recorded my last two albums partly in Jamaica with, with Jamaican artists. I used to be a, a hip-hop head. I didn't want to listen to anything but hip-hop. You know, I, I hated all kind of other music. You know? Other kinds of music. But then I got into reggae around uh, 93, 94 or something. But I, I, don't, I don't think you can hear it in the music back then. It took a while for it to, to come out in the music, maybe with my first solo album, Government Music or something. Um, and Loop Troop has always, the sound in Loop Troop has always been very tied to MB's sound because he makes all the music for Loop Troop. We, I don't know, we had a very important era around 98 where we were so influenced by Company Flow and and that whole New York rockers movement, uh, which made us want to be independent and made us start our own label, David vs. Goliath, in 98. I mean, we had been putting out records before that on our own, but we didn't call it anything, we just put it out. You know, in the beginning, I, I only liked the political stuff. I, I couldn't listen to uh, love songs. But then, you know, my perspective broadened, uh, and now, like, Gregory Isaacs is one of my biggest uh, heroes or whatever. But in the beginning, uh, I, I did like some Bob Marley stuff in the beginning, like some other political stuff, but that was also difficult because at the same time I was seeing these uh, kids at school walking around with the Bob Marley t-shirt and uh, I didn't like what they represented so I thought, okay, Bob Marley couldn't be for me, you know, not until I started listening and understanding the lyrics, but maybe, yeah, actually it was, uh, 
was the 80s, uh, the 80s stuff, or early 90s. I, I'm not sure what, what year it came out. Maybe early 90s. Yeah. With uh, Coco Tea, Coco Tea, yeah. Home Tea, and uh, Shaba Ranks and those guys when they did the uh, Pirate Anthem, for example. The one, uh, they might call us pirates. They might call it illegal, and we we uh, stole that for for a song called Illegal Commercials. That we put out in '96 or '97. Then I call us writers. Okay, okay, okay. So that that was uh, one of the early influences. But it, yeah, Cosmic, Cosmic got me into it. I love playing in the in the East. I've had great shows in uh, Romania, Czech Republic, and uh, Slovakia, uh, Poland. But of course, like for us, you know, when when we started getting out outside of Sweden, we started playing in, in Germany at first. And we have, we've had so many great shows in Germany, you know, so much support there. Uh, actually, one of the first shows we did in in Germany, uh, Zombie Squad from Holland, yep. was at the same same show. So, what's up to Zombie Squad? I mean, we we played in New York and Los Angeles and stuff like that, but uh, for me, it's not about the place you play. It's more about the vibe at that. It could be anywhere, you know. It could be in a small town in the south of Germany or in Spain or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, for us, the, the show in New York wasn't it wasn't our best show. Maybe we were a little ner nervous, so but it's 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 not about the place. It's more about the vibe. And like Eastern Europe got a great vibe. It's so much energy, so much love. And we were at my in my country house in uh, outside Malmo in Sweden. We we're gonna start the recording for the new album, Good Things, back in uh, the summer of. 2006 and we just wanted to get off uh, like on an easy start you know with good vibes so and like Luke Troop uh, we've always been really serious with everything we do but at the same time as you know when we hang out we're not like that it, it might seem like that in the music but we're really you know just playing around a lot as well so we thought okay let's start by doing a cover you know just uh, just to get started uh, we had no idea that we were gonna put it on the on the album actually I mean we weren't gonna put it on the album and we were uh, talking about different songs and we didn't want to pick a song that we loved because it's hard to, to cover uh, a song that you love, right? It's already so good. And Living on a Prayer is a good song, but it's not a song that we love. It's more a song that we heard when we were kids. You know? So everybody had a relation to it, right? But we didn't really love it. So the, the sentimental value. Uh, yeah. So it's, so it was easy to just do it without feeling like, oh fuck, we we fucked up the song. We just uh, we felt like, yeah, we're gonna do it. Fuck it. We're gonna put it on the album, but then we played it to a lot of our friends, and we got good reactions from it. And also, it fits with the new album because the new album is different from from our old albums. Then again, all Lutrup albums are different from each other, but this one it has a, the building with MB singing on it and kind of an up-tempo pop rock track. It has Naive, which is like a, almost like a Euro disco techno house track. And so we have all these different tracks and uh, in that way this one fit as well. We used to work as a paper boy, and that way you ain't making no paper boy. But that's cool. I took a lick of class in school, and meantime, up for rounds on the paper boy. 98, I made my choice that I wouldn't graduate, but instead, my boys and me broke into the scene as the devious G's and proceeded to make some noise. And the crowd, yo, they made some noise. Sweet in the holler, and later on, we were kids saying, Fuck the biz. The other kids loved that, but not the biz. They hated us. The feeling was mutual, but it made it tough. Not to be rich, just to make enough. When God's exist, I prayed to such. And even Lady Lux, I was answered, they can never break down us. No, they can never break down us. 
Coast. So it's about growing up, growing up in music and you know getting into music and just how we've done it.